you for this moment. you are changing today. Father, thank you because nobody will live here the same way. Thank you for a new chapter. A new story. New history. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name. Wave your hands to the King of Kings. Your name is Sire. Please sit up. Abba, oh, name. Your name is Jesus. Your name is Lord. Your name is Sire. Abba. Name. Your name is Jesus. Above all names, your name is Jesus. I see the name breaking the yokes. That's right. That's right. Leave up.
name is Lord. Father, we give you the praise. We give you the honor. Thank you because not one person will live here the same way they have come. Thank you for lives you have touched. Destinies you have changed. A new day. A new hour. A new season. A new phase. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a praise as you take your seat. here this morning you came with issues and you don't know how to handle them hand them over to Jesus anytime I don't know what to do I will come all of my cares upon you see the weight lifted from somebody already. That death they saw concerning you will never happen. That death they saw concerning you will never happen. That negative thing you saw concerning yourself will never happen. In the name of Jesus a new season for you. In Jesus precious name. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18.
Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. The Lord bless his word in Jesus name. Secrets of supernatural supply or supernatural wealth and this will be part 3 or 3C three or 2C rather. We want to understand the God's pathway to supernatural supply in our month of supernatural financial shift. It has been abundantly established that God is a divine provider. God is a supernatural supplier. Talking about the God who passed three and a half million Jews through the wilderness and there was no hunger. That God is a supernatural supplier. Where you are sitting now is proof that supernatural supply is real, constructed with the massive amount of money that was used to construct it in a time of massive recession. Three things you must note. First, the whole earth and its fullness belong to God. He owns the universe. He owns the silver and gold. The earth and all its fullness. They all belong to you. There's nothing you don't have. There's nothing you can give love. You are the hope of all the living. The source of everything. You are, you are, you are. You are the rose of Sharon. Hayaba. The lily of the valley. The bright and morning star. <laughs> you are, you are, you are. You are the root of David. The great I was on that gallery, this second gallery here, on this side, this up there, where the red chairs are. In the time of the construction, they were pouring concrete and pouring everything. I saw the massive mess of the construction going on. We had not reached the third gallery. In fact, we hadn't even finished with this side. We were just on this side. There was nothing here, nothing here. Just, they were casting that side. And I stood and I watched the resources. I watched the financial. I watched everything. And I watched the massiveness of the construction. Then that song came to me. I was standing right there. You own the universe. <laughs> you own the silver and gold. Only you can finish such a construction. <laughs> the earth and all its fullness. It all belongs to you. There's nothing you don't have. There's nothing you can give love. You are the hope of all the living. The source. It's confirmed. It is over confirmed. Haggai chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 He said the silver is mine The gold is mine Saith the Lord of hosts The glory of this latter house Shall be greater than of the former Saith the Lord of hosts And in this place
place, I will give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is his, the gold is his. That's the first thing we noted in the first service. Secondly, we said God empowers his people with his resources. He empowers. It is his decision to commit his wealth into the hands of his people. When Solomon became king, Solomon asked for wisdom. And God said to Solomon, you, you asked for the right thing. But I'm going to give you something you didn't ask for. First Kings chapter 3 verse 13. God spoke to Solomon and he said, And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto you all your days. You see, God, empowers his people with his resources. And thirdly, God empowers his people with his resources as they meet his conditions and live by his principles. As they meet his conditions. For every divine provision, there are human conditions. For every provision from God, there are conditions for man. If you need his consignment, you must subscribe to his commandment. He has consignments that are tied to commandments. Why do I say so? Isaiah chapter 43, verse 17. So, sorry, 48. 17 and 18. He said, Thus saith the Lord your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God, which teacheth thee to profit and lead you by the way you should go. Oh, that you have hearkened to my commandments, then your peace. The word peace is the Hebrew shalom. It means prosperity, it means welfare, it means well being, it means peace. It means nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. Then your, 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 your prosperity, your welfare, your, 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 your enlargement would have been like the river. If you had hearkened to my commandment. In verse 21 he said, And they thirsted not when he led them. As long as they follow what he said, they wouldn't lack what to drink. And they thirsted not as he led them. As long as they followed what he says, they wouldn't lack what to drink. You cannot follow his leading and end in lack. And they thirsted not when he led them. Having said that, We looked at some keys. We looked at some of these commands and demands that will bring supernatural supply. We started from Wednesday. Number one we said was love for God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. There are people who love things. They, never, they don't love God. They actually come to church because they of their love for things. They come to church to pray for God, to do things for them. It's not God they like. Number two secret is trust in God. That situation where you absolutely look away from any human source but God. Number three is faith in God. Those that are of faith are blessed. Galatians chapter 3 verse 9. Number four is walking in knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They perish. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. They end in scarcity, shortage, adversity for lack of knowledge. We looked at all of this and if you are not there, I will counsel that you pick up 
the message series so that we can be on the same page. Today we go to point number five. It is the act of giving. The act of giving. Which is equivalent to the act of sowing. Zechariah chapter 8 verse 12. The Bible said, The seed shall be prosperous. And the vine shall give her fruit. And the ground shall give her increase. There is a connection between planting and harvesting. There is a connection between releasing and receiving. There is a connection between releasing and receiving. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 8, in the first instance, he said, but this I say, he which sweat sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which sweat bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all good things, may abound to every good work. Everyone who sweats sparingly, reaps sparingly. So bountifully, you reap bountifully. Then in verse 10, he said, now he who ministered seed to the sower both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness 11 being enriched in every thing to all bountifulness which caused through us thanksgiving to God he ministered seed to the sower Anybody who has decided to make himself a, a giver, a lifetime giver, will never lack seed to give. I am a lifetime giver. I'm sentenced to giving. There is nothing I have that is mine. Because God knows that there are orphans and widows whose food is in my hands. Please understand that the whole of life is governed by the law of giving and receiving. We give out ox carbon dioxide, we take in oxygen. Plants take the carbon dioxide, use it to manufacture carbohydrate by the process of photosynthesis, and then we take the food from plant, we eat it. So we, the carbon dioxide they took from us, the manufactured food gave to us. We ate that food, went to the toilet with the food. What came out of us became manure that fertilized the plant. And the cycle continues. When anybody says, I have been breathing out too much, I am not ready to breathe out again, it's about to die. When anybody says, the food I ate is too sweet to go to the toilet with, he's about to be laid to rest. There is a place called the Dead Sea in the Middle East, in, in, in Israel. That sea does not receive water from anywhere. It doesn't give out water nowhere. And nothing is alive inside it. The Dead Sea does not receive, it does not release. So it cannot sustain life. Life is governed by the principle of releasing and receiving. The man gives his wife seed. The wife, the wife brings out a child. That seed was one cell. What came out as a child, you, don't, you can't talk about the number of, the brain alone is trillions of cells. That is how life is. The farmer goes to the farm and drops the, the seed. And then he reaps the crop. I heard the story from God, Saman Papo Yedeko, saying those days, when the, 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 the parents, they, they were going to, the parents would be going to farm, and he saw that the, the, the most robust seedlings, the bigger yams, was the one that they would set aside. He said, why is this set aside? So, so, he said, no, this is set aside. This is not for eating. This is for the next planting season. 
and they have to put aside quality yam if they needed quality harvest. That's how all of life is governed. You give your time and your energy and your youth and your attention to school. At the end of the day, they give you a certificate as a medical doctor, as a lawyer, and they produce you and release you to your generation. You give something. You give hours to your work. And at the end of the month, they release back to you in return for your giving. That is how life is. Giving is the law of life. And as it, as it is in the physical, so it is in the spiritual. What is the focus of our giving? Twofold. Number one, giving towards God. And number two, giving towards men. Towards man. Towards God, we give our tithes. We say all the tithes of the field belong to God. Leviticus about 27 verse 30. He said in Hebrews, in the New Testament, in case somebody said that is Old Testament, in Hebrews, he said, hear men that die. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 8. Men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them, of whom it is witnessed that he liveth. There he is still receiving tithes. Then the free will offering. The one we come before God during the services in Psalm 96 verse 8, we read that in the first service, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come to his courts. Every time we come, we come with something. Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 16 to 17. He said, none shall appear before him empty. And everyone shall give according as he is able. That is called free will offering. Then there is the sacrifices. I'm rushing at this because we have other things to deal with. And we'll, we'll, deal, with, we'll deal with these issues at the appropriate time, very soon. Sacrifices are the ones we do that inconvenience you. It's, you go extra mile, it's beyond tight, it's beyond offering. Maybe construction is on. Maybe evangelism is on. And you want to be involved in something like that. The Bible said in Psalm 20 verse 1 to 5, it said, the Lord hear you in the day of trouble. Somebody say amen. He said, the name of the God of Jacob defend you. Somebody say amen. He said, may God send you help from the sanctuary. Somebody say, amen. amen. May he strengthen you out of Zion. Somebody say, amen. amen. All these things are happening because he is remembering all your offerings. Offerings. The offerings and sacrifices you give, they, they establish a memorial altar for you before God. In the times when nothing can speak, your sacrifice will speak. One day a man's servant was sick in Luke chapter 7 from verse 1 to verse 5. If you read it, he was not a Jew. He was a, a, a Gentile. You can start from verse 2. A certain centurion servant who was there to him was sick and was about to die. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him. This was an army commander. He sent the elders of the Jews begging Jesus that he should come and heal his servant. As if, maybe, I don't know whether Jesus hesitated. But when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly. Somebody say instantly. They urgently demanded, saying, Master, this man is worthy for you to respond to his request. Please. Why? For he loved our nation and only him built us a church. Only him. Only single-handedly. If there is no reason why you will honor this man, even if he was another tribe, outside the Jewish tribe, that he built us a church. Okay? Please. Verse 6. Then Jesus went with them. He did, no question. Let's go. Only he built a church. Let's go. On his way coming, the man said, Oga, don't bother coming at, at all. It's enough. You are too big to enter my house. Just say one word. My servant will be healed. For I am a man under authority. 
I have soldiers under me and I am also under another authority. I say to one, go, he goes. I say to another, come, he comes. You are the commander general of the universe. Tell the devil to go. Jesus said, I haven't seen a faith like this before. Your centurion, your servant is healed. Go your way. That is the power of sacrifice. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Like I said, we'll talk about these things another time. If you won't heal this man for any reason, that he built a church, only him. That is sacrifice. There are other kinds of givings. But that is giving towards God. What of towards man? Giving towards man include the poor, the underprivileged. The people who can't help themselves. The people who are stranded. I'm just going to merely repeat the passages we read before Psalm 19 verse 20, Proverbs 19 verse 27. Scripture said, He that giveth to the poor, Proverbs 19 17, he lendeth to the Lord. And that which he has given, God will pay him again. When you are helping the poor, you are giving loan to God. Loan. Psalm 41 verse 1 to 3 says, Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. He will preserve him. He will keep him alive. He will be blessed upon the earth. He will be blessed for helping the poor. He will be blessed. And God will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. Those who want him dead before time cannot see their desire. Because it's considering the poor. This is giving to the poor. Giving to the hired servants. Anybody who works for you. Pay them. Pay them on time. James chapter 5 verse 4. He said, Behold, the wages, the hire of the laborers who ripped down your fields, who assisted you to repair your car, who assisted you to build your house, the laborer who assisted you to, to do these things, their salary that is in your hand, which you have kept back by fraud, See, fraud is in the Bible. King James Version. You kept it back by fraud. That money is crying. And the cries of them have entered, who have ripped, he has entered the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath. People worked for you, you kept back the money. He said, the God of heaven is hearing the cry of those people, he will deal with you. You can't pay your driver, drive yourself. You can't pay your dry cleaner, dry clean your cloth by yourself. Any service you can't pay for, you don't need it. Am I communicating at all? Then your family. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. The Bible said, if any man does not provide for his own, especially for those of his own house. He has denied the faith. He is worse than an atheist. Wife is starving. Children are almost naked. Yet there is enough money to do many things. Servicing of girlfriend and all manner of things. Mother is at home crying for food. Brothers' relations are stranded. Giving Towards man affects supernatural supply, the priest and the prophet, and then other kinds of giving. He told Abraham, Anybody who blesses you, I will bless. We'll come to this in detail because we have other things we are dealing with now. But one of these days, we'll look at different kinds of givings and their spiritual implication to the life of the giver. But let's move beyond giving the act of giving now. And then number six now is the act of service. When a person serves God, there are benefits of service. As you have in the physical, you have in the spiritual. Psalm 35 verse 27. He said, let them shout for joy. And be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yeah. 
Let them say continually. Let the Lord be magnified. Which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. He has pleasure in the prosperity of those who serve him. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 18. He said. For the scripture said. You shall not close the mouth of the cow that is threshing out the corn and the laborer is worthy of his reward. God cared even for farm animal to the point where in the Old Testament he said that animal that is on the field working, pushing out corn, don't close his mouth, don't, don't put a nose on his mouth so that Anytime he wants to eat any of the things he's working on, let him eat it. And he said, this law is not just for animals. It is for man. Take note of two things as we quickly rush to the final point. First of all, there is no service without reward. No labor without profit. No labor without profit. Bible says, in every labor, there is profit. But the talk of the lips tended to penury. As it is in the physical, so it is in the spiritual. Whether you are working for government, or you are a manual laborer, or you are self-employed. Nobody can say, I'm the owner of this company, so I, let, let me do anything I want. You will die of hunger. There must be labor for there to be reward. There must be aggressive, brutal labor. Secondly, God will never use man's service without wages. God is not a user of people. He's a raiser of people. He won't use anybody's service without wages. That was what he said in Jeremiah chapter 22 verse 13. He said, woe unto him that builded his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by wrong, that uses his neighbor's service without wages and does not give him for his work. Woe unto him. Woe unto him. If God says woe unto the person who is using somebody's service without paying them, will that God become a victim of his own law? No. What, is, what am I saying today? Just sit down in church doing nothing. Touch a soul. Impact a life. Don't be a bench warmer. Don't be a nominal church goer. Let your presence be felt. Let your absence be noticed. So that it can be clear that your presence was needed. Somebody say amen. A nominal churchgoer. The act of service. And number three, oh sorry, seven, three for today, seven as a whole is walking in integrity. Walking in integrity. Financial integrity is a non negotiable key to supernatural supply. Financial integrity. Genesis chapter 39 verse 5. Joseph was in the house of Potiphar. He said it came to pass even from the time that he made Joseph overseer in his house. And over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. Now verse 6 is very important. Potiphar left all that he had in Joseph's hand. He didn't know what he had. He came to a point where Joseph exploded his finances until the man didn't know what he had. Except the bread which he ate. And Joseph was a goodly person. And well favored. 
question. When was the last time somebody left all his money in your hand and nothing is missing? There are people, it is not, it's, it's only one million that they gave them. One million, one, 200,000 cannot be accounted for. I'd like you to see the Living Bible version of that Genesis 39 verse 6. Give me the Living Bible version, the New International Version, and the Good News Bible, if you have all of them. Rapid succession. Verse 6, just verse 6. So Potiphar gave Joseph the complete administrative responsibility over everything he owned. He hadn't a worry in the world with Joseph there. Nothing to worry about if it was Joseph that is in charge of the money. No worry except to decide what he wanted to eat. Ay, 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 ay. With Joseph there, with Joseph there, there are people, their brother can't even commit his money into their hands. The same mother, the same father, brother. There are people, their father can't even give them what this is. Look, check another translation. Potiphar turned over everything he had to the care of Joseph and did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. You have NIV, you have the message Bible. So Potiphar gave, all right, it's almost like the Good News Bible. Take your seat. If you know, somebody was sending money to his brother in Nigeria to build him a house, his house. But he, 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 he didn't tell the brother that he wanted to build the brother a house. The man built a very crooked house. <laughs> you know the kind of house that the staircase is like. <laughs> I'm just trying to climb. Just like. He finished building a rubbish nyama nyama house. The man said it's, uh, it was you I was building for. So carry it. it was, it's your house. I didn't want to tell you from the beginning. I wanted to build a house for you. And I wanted you to be the one to build it. It's for you. They say the way you dress your bed is how you lie on it. Are you following what I'm saying? See, life, life, life is a harvest field. What you sow today, you reap in time. You see? When God, now listen to this. When God saw that Joseph was faithful to handle a man's house, an individual's house, he took him over the whole prison service of Egypt. Everything came under the command of Joseph. God promoted him there. Genesis 39 verse 20, 21. 2021, and Joseph's master took him and put him into the, a prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison, verse 21. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison, verse 22. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hands all the prisoners that were in the prison, and whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. God is saying, you, you succeeded in handling one man's house, and nothing is missing. I take you over this institution. After Joseph handled the prison institution well, God said, now, I take you over the nation of Egypt. Everything was under Joseph in Egypt. Pharaoh said, it is only in the throne that I am bigger than you. Anything under Egypt, you are in charge. Genesis chapter 41, verse 39, all the way to verse 44. We we'll don't have the time. Many of us, little trial, they gave you 100,000 to handle, or 100 million, or 10 million. You 
messed up. God said 100 million was coming. And I'm going to usher you to the realm of 1 billion. But see where you stopped. See where you stopped. Petty money. Psalm 5 verse 12 said, But thou Lord will bless the righteous. He won't bless the unrighteous. He will bless the righteous with favor. He will compass him about as with a shield. Take note of the following and as we begin to close. Number one, what God has not given you does not add anything to your life. Anything God does, didn't give you is not an addition. It's a distraction. It's a destruction. Anything you gave yourself you, or you crookedly got, it's not, it doesn't enrich you. It doesn't enlarge you. There are some of our people who want to remain in power forever. From one level to another, from one level to another, they want to either be this or that or that or that or that, just, just to be there. Reason. For most people, survival outside questionable money is impossible. They have nothing else they can do with their lives. And one month outside of crooked money, they have they, they, they begin to they begin to they begin to scatter. Anything God has not given you does not add to your life. It's a distraction. Adam got one fruit that God did not say he should, he, God said he shouldn't touch. He got the fruit and lost the garden. He had the whole garden to himself. Except one fruit, don't eat it. He went and ate what they say he shouldn't eat. God said, you have all the, everything here is yours. But don't touch this one. Don't eat it. He went and ate it. And God said, get out. Move. Don't eat anything here again. As Adam left the garden, God put a military angel, a cherubim with a flaming sword at the east. Genesis chapter 3 and in verse 21 to 22. And Adam. Go ahead. 23. And the Lord God sent him forth from the garden to till the ground. 24. So he drove man out of the garden and placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims, not even one, with a flaming sword that move like this. If you move near here, they cut you. The place where he was celebrated, now he was a vagabond. He was, he could, he could, he was not even tolerated. What? How did Adam get the first food to eat after he left Eden? Only God knows. Go out. Anything you find, eat. Eat grass until you can plant anything. That's how it is. What belongs to you is heavier than what you are looking at. I just said something now. What God is planning to give, what God has in mind for you is bigger than what you are eyeing. Adam eyed a fruit and lost the whole estate. Somebody say amen. What have we said so far? So, what God has not given you does not, is not a plus to your life. Number two, blessedness and crookedness can never coexist. Never. They are mutually exclusive. They are metrically opposed. There is one choice between blessedness and crookedness. If you are ready to be blessed, you cannot be a crook. If you want to be crooked, forget the blessing. For the Lord will bless the righteous, not the crooked. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord. Not the man who is, who is after money at any cost. Thirdly, there are things people eat today at the expense of their future. 
You know Judas Iscariot? He was a treasurer of Jesus' ministry. He had the money bag. He was stealing from me, stealing from me, stealing from it. Nobody said anything until he decided to sell the master as a whole. Are you following me? The person who called you, you sell him. Do you own him? How much did you buy him? Matthew 27 verse 3. After he sold him, then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw, I'll read all the way to verse 10. When he saw that he was condemned, he repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? You see to it. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Future is over. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, it is not lawful to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood. And they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in it. Wherefore, that field was called the field of blood to this day. It's a symmetry, a property. The only thing that Judas Iscariot did with the money he stole was to buy a graveyard. Graveyard. Is graveyard a place where anybody wants to stay? Will anybody give his children graveyard as inheritance? You want them to die? That was the only thing the money Judas stole did for him. It cost him his seat in heaven. He rose in hell now as he speak. Because you can't kill yourself and make heaven. And finally, crooked practices attract the curse of God. Some people are wondering why is pastor preaching? This is what we should preach in the kind of nation we are in. Where everything is encouraging you to be crooked. It, they attract the curse of God. Have you read Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 11 before? As the partridge sits on eggs and does not hatch them, so is he that gets riches and not by right. He shall leave them in the midst of his days and at his end he shall be a fool. That is the money the man is sitting on that he didn't get correctly. He, he won't enjoy it. Look at Zechariah chapter 5 verse 1. Zechariah chapter 5 verse 1. Then I turned. I read to verse 4. I lifted up my eyes and looked and behold a flying roll. And he said to me, what seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. The length thereof of 20 cubits and the breadth thereof 10 cubits. Then said he to me, this is the curse. What you just saw is a curse that is going over the face of the whole earth. And the curse is for who? For everyone that still it shall be cut off as on this side according to it. And everyone that swear it shall be cut off as on that side according to it. I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and he shall enter into the house of the thief, that cause, and into the house of him that swear falsely by my name, and he shall remain in the midst of his house, and shall consume it with the timber thereof, and the stones thereof. That is the investment of the fraud is doomed for destruction. I will allow that cause to enter his house and scatter it. That will never be your story. Because that will never be your pathway. Somebody say a loud amen. Please. Let us. The aim of this preaching. Is not to bring condemnation on anybody. And. Um, if. Your conscience is touched. There is only one thing to do. Lord I am sorry. I must have acted. Either from greed or ignorance or any way I've acted, forgive me, Lord. And Lord, from this day forward, that will never be my testimony. God is a merciful God. I 
think it is Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. Can he that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes, not only confess, he has confessed and for, forsaken them, he shall have mercy. Am I communicating? What I have said is all the, includes all the fraudulent things that we see in our world today. Unjust gain. Corrupt financial practice. Briberies. Theft. Robberies. All forms of scam. 419 internet fraud. Blood money. Ritual money. Money from wicked acts such as kidnapping. Prostitutious money. Money from dealing with Somebody is selling drugs, killing people, and making money from. I went to a country in South America one day, and a man met me, a Nigerian man, South American country. I don't want to mention the name. You know, South American countries of Venezuela, Colombia, and all that. I was in one of those. And a young man met me, a Nigerian man. He said, um, I should pray for him. I said, Pray for you for what? He said, He carries, is it Kaya or, or luggage? The car is, is about to move with luggage. That uh, uh, I should just pray for him for successful passage. And as he was talking, I understood what he meant. I said, if I curse you, now you die. Do you know who you are talking to at all? If it was our country, I would have taken him to police straight. <laughs> Check this man very well. He's carrying something. <laughs> I should pray for him. In a foreign land. He's about to travel with, with uh, cargo, with luggage. I should pray for him for successful passage. Me? Take your seat. And there are people like that. That is how they want to survive. And that kind of money does not have a future. Beloved, anything God doesn't give you, don't take it. I hear that there are people who who file something called chronic ailment in office that they have a chronic disease they will go to a doctor to fraudulently give them a medical report that they have end stage kidney disease or a cancer or something so they can give them millions or something they want to buy a car they can give them millions go, go and uh, buy the car and they say they are going for treatment that is that man has invited disease on his lineage he just invited calamity. Thank God had him and devil had him. He said he has end stage kidney disease. How will he die without, without having that kidney disease? All manner of practices in the name of money. You will call cow your cousin because you are looking for meat. Praise the Lord. This is my counsel very, very quickly. Our time is up. Line up with the principles of God to access his provisions. It works. Job of old, the Bible said, he was the richest man in the, in the east and this man was upright. He feared God. He eschewed evil. Righteousness is combinable with riches. There was a man, look at that, in the land of Oz. His name was Job. That man was perfect. He was upright. He was one that feared God. He was never crooked. And verse 3, the Bible said, he was the richest of all the men, the greatest. It's combinable. Number two, refuse to follow the multitude to err. And this is what everybody is doing. Doesn't make it right. No, everybody, they have signed. It doesn't make it right. And finally, embrace the secrets of supernatural supply. If you are a tighter and you are a criminal, it's plus one, minus one, zero. In fact, if you, if you are bringing corrupt money to pay tight, you are actually reporting yourself. It's better not to tight from that because every, as you brought it, God, maybe God didn't remember. Okay, this thief. Maybe 
was thinking of something else. Then you came to remind him of yourself. By paying tight on and giving offering from questionable money. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? I tell people that it's not every, there are monies that enter the offering, but God did not receive it. And this is not the kind of place where you can say, bring any money you have. Not, not, this, not this type of place. Praise the Lord. Just follow the practices as, as it is lined up in scripture. And your destiny shall never be aborted. God loves you. I love you. And I want to let you know that as long as you hang around here, you will hear raw truth. Stand up on your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and let's worship God. Let's honor him, appreciate him. Magnify his precious, holy, wonderful name. Father, we thank you. Father, we honor you. Father, we adore you. Father, we praise you.